Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with Alex Ferry, who is the founder, owner, and actually impresario, if you will, of a brand new resort uh, that, well, brand new, it started at the beginning of this year, so it really is new because a lot of people haven't been there yet, called Pamea, the House of Aya. And we're going to talk about that. We have been down there several times, and you have seen a video, but we've actually never talked to Alex because he's always too busy. So we're, we're going to try to spend some time with him now to talk about how he developed this wonderful resort that we've been able to enjoy. And you'll find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Alex, uh, how are you and where are you? Hey, James, thank you very much. And thank you for having me. Um, I must apologize. I'm always very busy, but there's always nice to find spaces to talk to people as well, because otherwise we get too locked up in our own world and... Uh, so it's good to expand your mind a bit. Yeah, well, I, when I saw you last, you were racing off to Iceland. So I think, I think yeah. you probably had a great trip there. But uh, I only saw you briefly. But uh, great to see you here and uh, 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 to get an idea. Because, you know, you, you, you started this resort. Um, and, and, you know, uh, how did you conceive of the idea for this Pamea, the House of Aya? Well, Pamea really came, um, was born basically... Um, from my own lifestyle and what I do with my friends now, because basically um, we have a, my, my four, I took over the family business like about 13 years ago, and we have other companies and other and, and part of the sectors is um, hotels, and one of the main um, brands we have is called Sandals, and that's like a more like a like a large resorts, fun family activities and everything. But that was more for me it was more an inherited company, you know, it was already half half built when I took it over. Um, so what I wanted to do, I always wanted to do something that reflected my personal values, really mm -hmm. to the core to the, to the max, you know. So um, all the places I used to go around the world and enjoy with my friends, all the places I go with my family, all these elements that I enjoyed, I wanted to try and place within uh, one concept. And um, it was going to be one thing, but then some crazy idea came to me. And eight months before we opened, um, I came up with um, Palmaya. That was the, uh, and the ideas and what, what it was going to be. So basically, we rushed to finish it and, and it made it up as we went along. And in the end, it turned out pretty good, I think. There's lots to be done still, but um, like any product, when you start it, it takes at least three years to stabilize a hotel and leave it looking spick and span and everything working. But I think we've got a great base to work from. And now we've got the core, the skeleton, let's call it. We're going to bring, now we're trying to build a soul around it, you know, which is the people, the community and the collective and everything that goes with it. Well, I do know that, that you're, you, to, I believe you have to get through a Sandos to get to the re resort, right? Uh, yeah, the reason is because this, this property um, we've had for many years and um, it's so isolated and so private that you can't actually get to it. Um, it's, there's a funny story to that, but it's maybe another day because it's quite a long one, but it has no roads to it. You can't get to it. I mean, the only way you could probably get to it is by helicopter. So um, luckily for us, it was um, adjacent to another property we own. So what we explain to people is that to get to this place that's so exclusive and in a way, we have to actually drive through another resort to get there. So that's <laughs> pretty neat. Well, I, do, I, do, I do remember the, 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 the wonderful uh, gate that you go through that divides the resort from the Sandos resort. And it definitely is like going into another world. Yeah, the idea is also like, you know, going through reality into your slice of heaven also, you know, which kind of like, it feels like, the, like that one way because the normal resorts are quite more dense and this is a lot more, um, there's a lot more nature in it, a lot more green, more trees, dunes, and it's a lot more um, integrated into nature than a normal resort is. So it does feel totally different. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about your background, how you got, I mean, obviously you had the family business that was in resorts, but how did you get an, interested in, in resorts in particular and specifically wellness resorts? Well, the resource basically is because I, uh, when, I, when I, I studied business in London and Paris and places, but when I moved to Spain, I started working in sales in the um, family business in Spain. And then I didn't really like working for the family. So I separated from the family. I started my own company. And I started for five years. I had a company that um, I uh, manufacture and design furniture from about seven different countries in Asia. I put them together. I sent it all to Spain and I'd wholesale it within Spain. And in 2007, the company went bankrupt because there was a property market collapse. So if you can't buy a property, you can't buy furniture, right? There's no, no furniture sales, there's no home sales. Right, so right. sales plummeted, so I closed that down. And I came on vacation to Mexico with my friends and I realized that um, I guess it was time to step up and take on the family responsibility because they needed help, no? So I started, uh, I lived here for a year learning and then in the end, um, the guy who was here running the place uh, retired. 
And I spoke to my family and said, hey, we need to find someone to run this. And they said, no, you're going to run it. I was like, no, I'm not. This you are. <laughs> yeah, it's called it being pressed into service, I think. Exactly. In the end, I was pressed into service, exactly. And uh, <laughs> I've done, you know, I think I've done as best I could. I've, I've done, I mean, we've, been, we've always been, uh, I'd love to innovate. I love new ideas, love new things. So I think uh, with every business we've done, we've always tried to innovate in the market. Um, we were the first resort ever to, like more than 10 years ago, to split a resort into adults and families. So we've always done things before anyone else, which is pretty cool, you know, which being smaller allows us to make quick decisions, whereas larger companies are more structured and they, have, they take longer to make decisions like that. And now you have one of the first that has a resort within a resort that's so exclusive. And I did want to ask you about where the name comes from, uh, Palmea, and then your, the, the, after that is Palmea, the house of Aya. Uh, where where yeah, well, does that come from? Well, okay, first of all, the, 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 I wanted to include the word palm in it because uh, we're located in a very special part of Aramaya where there's something called the palma cheat, which is a palm tree that's in danger of being, uh, going, going extinct because of all the development being done. Because it's only it only grows on the front edge of the dune on the beach. It's a very thin, long palm tree, and most people, most people just obviously plow it all down, and build, and you know. So basically, I wanted to pay respect to that palm tree. And then Aya comes from basically well, 2019 was my first ayahuasca ceremony. Uh, Aya ayahuasca is what they call it in Peru. They call it Aya, and then my daughter's called Alaya. So there were lots of Ayas going on in my life at the same time. You know, and they kind of like married together nicely. No, that's so great. Was, uh, that was the reason. Yeah, and well, it has, an exotic, it, exa- it has an exotic name, but it does roll off the tongue, I will tell you that. Yeah, so, yeah. And the House of Aya is the, uh, living within the house of nature, you because know, Aya is supposed to be our connection and our symbiosis to the natural world. And the whole idea behind Palmaya is that you come here to initiate a personal growth journey, and hopefully um, the, the only conclusion we can all reach is that we are one with the world, and that way you will care more for the planet. Now, that, that was it's definitely different. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, let's let's talk let's talk a little bit about make what makes this resort so different and and how does it stand out in terms of all the accommodation services a- ambiance etc. I think it's definitely as I said the soul the fact that um my, my the team I have of people is amazing and as of being a small company I can curate this um, the team with um very interesting and quirky characters as well that form part of this whole thing but there isn't really one. First of all, there isn't really a decent wellness resort here. And by wellness, I mean somewhere where you can be healthy. By wellness, I don't mean like kumbaya, sit and meditating in silence for three months, you know? Because um, what I call it, what, well, I'll be launching this over the next year or so, but what I call it is progressive wellness, okay? Not just wellness. I'm going to be launching my concept of progressive wellness over time. And what I want to prove to the world is that you can be healthy whilst enjoying your life at the same time. You can be healthy while having a good time. You can be healthy while enjoying music. And most place, most people equate um, wellness or, or the going on a diet to um, sacrificing things. No? So most, um, when you go to clinics, for example, that are based on wellness, they're all white. They look like hospitals. You go in there, they put you on a diet. They give you a potato a day to eat, and they, <laughs> they put you on animal suffering all week. And the fact is that 85% of people who do a diet, after doing a diet, put on more weight than before they did the diet in the first place because diets don't work. What works is adopting a lifestyle. Right. So what I want to do here is show people that um, like eating plant-based is super tasty, it's super varied. I mean, it's advanced so much in the past five years. There's so many amazing things now to eat. I want to show people that music is a super important component for me because music is part of happiness. It's part of our vibration, connection to ourselves, to everyone, community. And um, listening to music makes people happy. Happiness is one of the most important elements for a healthy immune system. Like, look at the world now. We're, we're drenched in fear. Fear, is, fear creates stress. Stress lowers your immune system, and then everyone's going to start getting um, Ill, illness and things, you know? So no, um, I, the I, idea I, is... I absolutely agree. And uh, uh, I, I will say, and I, having stayed there, uh, nothing made me happier in the morning than, than uh, having my bowl of tropical fruit uh, for breakfast every morning. And also... Nothing made me happy than to hear a lot of the music you're talking about uh, because that really was, you know. Now, let, let's talk a little bit about that because there's some things, unique features of, of the property. I mean, I've, I've never, maybe I've been missing, but I, I've never been at a property that had a shaman. Uh, I've never had a, a pr- pr- someone who has a wellness well, coordinator, a ritual. Yes, we actually, we actually, we actually, yeah, well, we... We actually call him the, he's meant to be a personal growth guy, but right. everyone's labeled him shamans. Oh, okay. So he's like, become the shaman without, become the shaman without wanting to be. 
Um, but you also have you have you have nomadic guides, which are we would call them butlers, but they're now they are your buddies, your nomadic guides. They're wonderful. Yeah. Well, the nomadic guides are supposed to do more than just um, be a butler, and that will um, happen as we train them more and teach them more over time. So the nomadic guides are supposed to show you the path of wellness you will be able to take and everything in the future. Um, now they are more your personal assistants, let's say, and they can organize anything for you. But the idea is also to integrate into them the wellness element as well in training, which is why they're called nomadic guides, really. No, they, they were wonderful. And they were, I mean, I, I enjoyed it because I got to know them pretty well. And you got to know the, the person you're, they weren't just yeah, exactly. or, or that or servants, they would, you know, tell you about the place and where you should be and uh, what was going on. And it was a really a, a, a great uh, relationship during that time. Let's talk a little bit about one, something you did mention, uh, the cuisine, and you talked about the plant based, but you know, you have three full restaurants, actually four, if, uh, four restaurants. Or uh, a food truck, yeah. Yeah, so there's, what, what led you to the select that cuisine and the, and the different restaurants you offer? Well, I've studied a lot of nutrition myself. I've been plant-based myself for 12 years. Um, I am, and anyone who doubts it should just go out now, do a blood test eat plant-based for two weeks and then do a blood test and then get back to me. I mean, if you have worse results than you did at the beginning of it, I'll give you a million dollars. It's impossible. <laughs> so it really does work. It's um, uncontested science nowadays. It's just probably is obviously industry doesn't want you to um, know that because if you know, people knew that just eating healthy was a cure to many uh, diseases and many other things, then you know, there wouldn't be money to many other things. But eating healthy is like, imagine you, it's the, what you're putting into your body. I mean, how can that not be the most important thing in your life? Where you're putting into your body and goes through all your organs, through your system. I mean, it's super important. So um, the, re the reason we have it is one, because I believe that it's the most sustainable way of eating. Um, you know, it uses a lot less natural resources than eating um, animal-based foods. So how can I sell sustainability if I don't have that option, you know? So I need to give people that option just by defect if I want to be trying to be as sustainable as possible, right? Sure. And then if you're going to be wellness, then I need to offer people the healthiest alternative possible. And uh, we will be doing even more healthy um, options in the future. For example, there's going to be um, raw items on raw vegan items on the menu as well for people wanting to um, detox some heavy metals and things. Uh, lots of things are coming like that in the future, I hope. Yeah, well, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it because you have not only your sort of beach, beachfront restaurant, which is where you can have uh, breakfast and lunch and sometimes dinners. You also have three of an Asian restaurant. Uh, uh, you have a Mexican, which is logical. And you have a Mediterranean restaurant. And all are sup superb. And it's if you thought wellness cuisine uh, tasted, you know, kind of, kind of, I don't know. Yeah. Well, basically, if, if, you, basically if, you, if you eat plant-based correctly, you can eat as much as you want and you won't put on any weight. Right. And also important to remember that it's not just plant-based. It's like plant-based with non-vegan options. So, for example, we have something called the, was the, there's a poke bowl. So, by defect, it comes out with dehydrated watermelon, which has been soaked in various sources for like 36 hours. And it dehydrates and it has the texture of tuna. But then that dish, for example, will have the option of swap for tuna for whoever wants to have it, you know. So it's pretty cool because a lot of couples come and maybe um, the lady girl is, is plant-based and the guy isn't and they can both eat what they want, you know. So one can follow their journey and uh, the other person can follow the journey they want. The idea is that wellness isn't forced on you. It's up to you to choose and be responsible for your health. Because also when you go somewhere, um, like one of these clinics, they're forcing you to do things, you know. You need to be, we need to be more responsible for our immune systems and for the choices we make in life, you know. Um, so here's somewhere you can learn to make those choices. No, absolutely. Now, uh, w the other thing about this is a re this is really a resort for everyone. It's couples, singles, families. Uh, yeah. you, you went out, actually, you have a, a wonderful different concept for a children's club with the, using sort of the Waldorf school. Um, and I, I was, when I first got to the resort, I was, you know, pleased and, and very surprised to find that. But it really is for everyone. Yeah, I think it's important because in the end, um, part of our, like uh, one of our principles is uh, not excluding anyone, you know. So basically, I think that um, we need to all become, learn to be more tolerant to each other. We need to learn to be more integrated with each other. And sure, kids can be an annoying screaming around you, but this place is so big, you can always find a, a little space on the beach where there are no kids. And honestly, the type of people coming here, you very rarely see an annoying screaming kid, you know. I mean, it really is a different type of person. The people who are looking for this lifestyle want their children to accompany in, in this lifestyle as well, you know? 
Because if I'm learning, if I'm like growing personally and I'm like I'm finding new adventures in life, I'm like starting to eat differently. I want my kids to do that as well. You know, I don't just want to do it by myself. You know? No, it's absolutely true. And of course, your 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 Waldorf uh, focused uh, 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 kids club is really so relaxing. No video games, no movies. No. You know, you, they really have to 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 get with that program. And I think from what I saw, a, a lot of kids just love it. Yeah, well, the idea is to potentiate creativity and connection to nature. And basically what the world of system does is it um, respects the natural cycles of growth of the child. So basically until a child's seven years old, they're not taught anything academically because a child's brain doesn't work that way. It grows through creativity, observation, touch, tactile and everything. And then when you introduce the academic side in school, for example, they then learn um, very quickly. You know, you don't need to... There's a big era now happening where everyone's trying to cram too much into them too young, you know? No, absolutely yeah. not. Now, now that, that's, it, it is for everyone, but really, what are your target guests? Who, 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 is, who, who is someone that you think really will enjoy this resort? I think for me, the, the ideal target guests are um, what we call basically, there's a, there's a, they even have names nowadays. It's, 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 I don't like to use the word luxury because we're not opulent luxury. We're more like sophisticated, bohemian, nomadic, like, Luxury. I don't know how to really describe it in a way, you know, but um, I think what's happened is the reason I created this as well is because being like in contact with the States after living here for so long for 13 years, what I realized is in the, in the States, like there's this promise, you know, and the promise of buy everything and make you happy. Right. Buy the latest car, make you happy. Buy the latest watch, you'll be happy. Buy the newest handbag. Buy the latest iPhone. And this rat race, what I've noticed is that so many people I've seen are like, like, burnt out from it and tired of it and have realized that it's a scam basically and this material world doesn't make you happy now but a lot of people who have made a lot of money you know, unfortunately you need to like climb up the corporate ladder or you need to make money in a way to even realize that because a lot of people start buying and buying and buying and then they realize this isn't doing anything to me you know this, right. this promise we've been this marketing messages everywhere buy this buy that has it made me happy so this place is really for those people who have um realized that and they're looking for something new in their life. They're looking for a different journey. They're looking for different information. They feel there's something different in the world, but they don't quite yet know what it is, or they discover what it is and they want to expand on it. And um, there's even words for this in the in the um, like in the marketing reports. They're called like untethered luxurians. Um, there's the aesthetic luxurians. There's lifelong learners. All these new profiles of people that are coming out who are the new sophisticated luxury. You know. The new sophisticated luxury doesn't want like gold taps and diamond chandeliers, no? They want like um, really authentic products. They want um, artisan handmade things with, with, with messaging, with the, with the sustainability element in it. They want things to have a meaning and they want it to be more simple, you know? It's no longer about wearing clothes with like brand stamped all over it because I think people realize nowadays that with this massive wealth disparity in the world, uh, it's not very tasteful to go out there wearing things with massive labels on showing that you spend more money than the person next to you, yeah. you know? So a lot of like uh, clothes with no brands, but very high quality are being made. I mean, it's, um, I think the world's changing for sure. Now, uh, of course, the big question this year, you, you opened, I think, technically it was at the end of December last yeah, year. technically in December, yeah. Uh, but then, of course, and I was actually down there in, uh, in, in early March, um, uh, and then, of course, uh, we got hit by this pandemic. What, what has it been like opening a resort like this during this period? I mean, honestly, we've lived through bad things already. I had swine flu in 2010, so we closed down the resorts for a month. I mean, the hardest part of it has been um, having to um, lay off all the people, you know, mm. because we had 3,500 employees. Now we have 1,200 and uh, depending on what happens these months now, if the U.S. goes into more lockdowns and things start getting worse, then we'll obviously have to try and go into survival mode and like, lay off more people, no? I mean, that's the worst part of it, honestly, because they're people you see all the time and, you know, you see around and knowing that they've got no work and no money now is pretty heartbreaking. But in the end, my job is to ensure the survival of the business so that in the future, if it comes back, people can be employed again, you know? So sometimes you've got to make hard decisions. Hard decisions, it hasn't been easy making hard decisions, but you've got to make them. Um, honestly, you just deal with it day by day. By day. It's like, and you know, we used to crisis management anyway, so. Yeah, well, this, this, you were closed from, I guess, what, towards the end of March till about June. Uh, yeah, right? we closed three months, yeah. And then, yeah, then but now, now you're open and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, 
won't be closing again, although uh, your markets may suffer a little right now. Although I got to tell you, a lot of Americans are kind of ready to go, and Mexico is very is beckoning. And uh, I can understand regardless it. of the rules. <laughs> yeah, I can understand it because in the end, what's the point in living under fear, right? In the end, you're not enjoying life. You're not happy. It's like you know, I got so many friends in Europe who are coming over as well because they're like. Ah. I don't want to live like this. What's the point, you know? That's it. Now, to talk a little bit about how the concept of Palmea has evolved over the course of this year. You already talked about how you're making changes and you're going to evolve even further. Uh, uh, talk a little yeah. bit about where we were. Well, you're... imagine if we only invented the whole idea eight months before we opened it. There's so much more to be done still. So we'll be um, hopefully updating the web with new things as they come along. But right now we're building the base. I need the base to be impeccable. I need the service to be impeccable. There's a lot of work and training to be done. This takes a long time. You know, it's not easy to train people. It's not easy to get anyone in general to understand this concept. So imagine getting people who work for you to try and understand it as well. It's, it takes time. So we just need to be a bit patient and assistant with all our training. And hopefully once I feel that the base layer is good, then I will start building more layers on top of it. You know? Well, I do know you, you're, you're trying new things. Well, I was down there. Thank you for a, a six-day work away. Uh, 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 idea, yeah. In fact, I remember I was there. You were you put a desk in my room to, so I actually could work. Yeah, uh, yeah so a little mini office space for everyone and everything. We've got like IT service. Yeah, the idea is also to create little products for different segments. I'm developing now a um, a meditation room in one of the bedrooms at the back. So I'm gonna. So I want to do the like a so people can buy a king bedroom with a meditation room in the back for yoga and meditation just for them privately. Well, I maybe I'll, so I'll come down and try that time. Some days, these days, I think I need it. Believe me, yeah. it's going. But uh, now, now some stretching in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. Now, now talk a little bit about the, uh, once you've gotten this concept down. Do you foresee opening other Palmea resorts elsewhere in Mexico or in other parts of the world? What's your vision? Yeah, I think if this one, yeah, if this one works, I think the next one will be in Costa Rica. Oh. So for sure, that's yeah, great. I think no, it's I something think that. Somewhere I very much enjoy myself as well. I think the lifestyle goes with this. And I think the type of people that go there look for this product as well. And there's nothing really with this concept there either, you know? No. Not Iceland though, right? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't mind Iceland. <laughs> I only, I only say that because you just vacationed there, but that's it. No, because, you know, we're typical humans. We always want what we don't have, right? I'm on the beach in the sun all year. I want ice and cold. <laughs> I want to be, be alone. I don't want to be surrounded by anyone. So uh, that's fantastic. Now, who's one of the opposite? All right. Is there anything else you want to tell all of our travel advisors out there about Palmea and, and how they can work to sell this better? I know a lot of people have heard about the resort. They say, oh, I've heard of that one. And then I, of course, tell them, yeah, I've been there. You've got to yeah. go check it out. Yeah, well, no, I understand it's not an easy concept to grab for sure because it really is specific to a lifestyle. So anyone who's interested, I think um, what would be good is like contact our salespeople and we'll be starting, we're starting to make um, specific videos as well. I'll probably be doing some as well and we'll do specific material to help them understand it better to see who they can really sell it to, you know? Basically, anyone who thinks outside the box and you think looks a bit crazy, send them to me. <laughs> now that's a target market. That's Basically. a target market. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alex, I want to thank you for, for well, first of all, uh, to get more information, I believe uh, the website is, is House of Aya. House of com. yeah. www.com, www. not Palmea. Uh -huh. because you, 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 I don't know where that's going to take you, but the House of com. Alex, uh, I, I, once again, I want to thank you. It was a wonderful stay the last time, and I've now stayed there twice. Uh, I guess I may be one of your most loyal cl uh, clients uh, or customers. Uh, look, look forward to seeing you a third time. I will. Uh, believe me, I, I had a wonderful time. I would go back in a minute. And again, thank you for taking the time to spend with us here today about Palmea. Amazing. Thank you so much, James. See you soon. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.